All right, welcome to the section on merging the different parts. Now, uh, merging is something that we've previously done inside of the Rigging 2 tutorials. Uh, so I'm going to go very briefly over uh, this concept again and uh, just more specifically kind of mention which ones we should be merging for this specific character. Uh, keep in mind that this is something that's going to change from uh, one design to the next. So um, I strongly uh, encourage you to refer back to the Rigging 2 tutorials if you want to uh, to kind of cover this again uh, because we'll be going a little bit faster on this one. So uh, we'll link it below, just make sure that you um, go back to it if uh, it's not quite fresh in your memory. Uh, so uh, for this particular character, uh, it's a pretty good giveaway anywhere that you have uh, the lines kind of crossing in the middle here where they shouldn't be. And you have the design kind of looking uh, a little bit off. Um, so you want to uh, make sure that you apply a merge to those. Uh, we'll talk about cutters uh, a little bit more in the next video. For this one, we'll just uh, focus on merging. So for instance, these two parts here, keep in mind that um, when it comes to doing that for a 360, you want to make sure that you, uh, you bring the part um, between the two parts that merge together where it's going to make the most sense. So um, ordering them up on the composite, um, for instance, for the head and the jaw, I could invert them, making sure that I have one or the other. For me, it makes more sense. It's a little bit easier to grab uh, the jaw if I have this one sitting on top and the head is still easy enough to grab. So you can put those in the, uh, the proper order on the comp to make sure just to uh, to have the the best um, possible options for grabbing the different parts directly from the camera um, so we'll be merging those two since this is a character that's not really using lines a lot there is some pieces that are using lines uh, so that's why this one we should definitely merge with the rest of the character um, for these parts here not really necessary. We don't want to do that for the neck. Uh, the same goes for that one. For the arms, definitely we'll want to be merging those together. Um, we don't necessarily want to uh, merge them with the torso, uh, but I feel that it's important to have those for the, uh, for the rest of the arms here and the hands uh, to merge together. We'll have the torso and the hips merging together. We don't want to have that little line there. The only one that we want is the one from the uh, from the crotch here, which will come above everything else. So we'll have a bit of a, a cutter job to do in uh, the next video. We have a very slight line here on the, uh, on the thigh. So we want to merge the thigh with the rest of the pieces over here. Um, as for the rest over here, we don't really need uh, to have a merge on those since there's no line. So the main purpose of the merge here is really to not have any overlapping lines where there shouldn't be. Um, ideally, we want to do kind of like what we did inside of the um, of the merging tutorial of Rigging 3. We want to make sure that we can use it um, with Z-depth compatibility, so kind of back and forth merging on uh, both pieces. And uh, this is strictly because we want to, uh, we are going to be doing a lot of Z-depth moves because we need to adapt this character to match the other views that we have inside the designs. So there'll be a lot of that going on. For instance, the arm here is popping in front, we'll have uh, the legs going in front as well, depending on the different views. A lot of that is going to be happening when we go and pose our next views. So we want to plan ahead for that and make sure that we can use one or the other. So basically bringing this on top or in the back and not have the line in either way. Um, so I'm going to do the merge of the head real quick principle is pretty much the same for 
all the other merging inside of the characters. So uh, just reviewing that really quick, we'll have the jaw here, which we've split into line and color because we'll be using the auto patch for the merging. We have the same thing on the head. We have a full line all around the head and the color inside of the color art. So now that we have that, we want to get both of those layers split. So line and color art over here. We we'll want to have that for both of our layers so we can actually make a bit of room here, copy that and go over to our head. If it helps, you can actually bring the head over to the side of the jaw. That might make it a little bit easier to, uh, to see what you're doing. So I'm going to connect the head to both of those, connect the jaw to both of these as well. We'll disconnect the one that we have here. And let's just create a comp so that we can use that at the back. So as I mentioned previously, depending on which one you want to have on top, you could actually swap the pose, the positions uh, of these two and have the head be on top or at the bottom, just like here. All right, so now what do we want? We want this line here to be cut by the auto patch of the head. So we'll bring in a cutter. We want the line to be cut and we want it to be cut by not the color, but the auto patch because otherwise part of your line will be eaten away. So we want to go and get the auto patch. So this is gonna be, this is gonna be our third node in here. Since we're going both ways, we'll have the same setup over on the other side. Auto patch here. We're cutting this line from the head by the auto patch. We just connect that here and uh, we'll do basically the same in the other direction. Uh, I don't think it's gonna happen very much that you'll have to bring this part on top but just for the sake of the other pieces, let's do it here as well. So we'll cut the line by the auto patch of the opposite piece. So that way I can bring this to the back. I can bring this to the top. Of course, as you can see now, it kind of just brings everything to the back. This is because my comp is in bitmap mode. So we want to change our comps to pass through. That way we'll be able to modify the Z position of not every layer flattened under the bitmap composite, but just move things around inside of it or outside as well. Now that we have this, uh, we may want to uh, add additional pieces that are going to be cutting this line. Uh, this is not necessarily the case for this one, but for the arms, for instance, you'll have this one uh, being cut by the mask of the arm and of the hand. So you can always add a composite above the mask to make sure that you have multiple uh, things coming to mask the line here. So um, once you have this, definitely, uh, I've mentioned this as well in rigging to don't redo this from scratch each and every time. Make sure that you gain some time by uh, copying this or uh, grouping it and templating it to then reuse later on. So that's possibly uh, the best solution that you could have uh, for these situations. So basically these are always going to be what's going to be read at the bottom. If you want, you could even throw a comp underneath it and just have everything connecting to this part and you could group up this part here that way you would only really have to have the composite connecting into the masks uh, so don't forget to set those as pass through just to make sure that uh, we have uh, we don't have to 
go inside each node to make sure that um, that we can use the Z depth position. So especially if you intend on copying and pasting, uh, if you want, as I mentioned, you can uh, copy a certain part over. Usually I leave the comp out so I can connect the masks directly without having to go inside the group. And you can group that up. And now we have two ports. The left port is always going to be the masks and where they go and connect. And the right port is going to be what is going to be cut. So basically the same setup here. Uh, it's just that we have it grouped up for an easier uh, management of the space here. Uh, so we could remove that and just copy and paste this over and reconnect them. That would work as well. Uh, so make sure that you guys apply this to all the other merges inside of the characters. So as we mentioned, uh, you can go back to the start of the video and kind of just look at what we've said for the other merges. And then we can keep going with creating the cutter systems over in the next video.